Good evening. It's August 22nd, 2006. This is Brian Shannon speaking from Alpha Trends Blogspot. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at these cues on the screen right now, the NASDAQ 100 Trust. We've got, you know, what's really kind of looking like a bullish flag uh, forming for the market. And most of the emails I'm getting from people are saying, Brian, when do we sell short? I just don't see it. Um, I, I don't see the case for, for selling short right now. I think this market has, is, is in the process of turning the corner higher. That is the, uh, the NASDAQ. And I think that uh, the S&P has already done it. I think short term, we could probably see a test of these highs, 39.20. And when I say short term, you know, the market likes to confuse the majority of people. Um, people have still been complaining about the volume in this market. But, you know, the volume increased a little bit today and we had a nice uh, positive green candle. But it, volume, again, doesn't pay. I hate to sound like a broken record there. If we can take out tomorrow, today's highs tomorrow at 38.80, I think we're pretty much going straight for that 39.20 level. Um, so... The market continues to act strong. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the stocks because I don't want to make this a uh, real long video. I've got to go for a bike ride with my kids. Let's take a look at Anderson's Incorporated, symbol A-N-D-E. Now, this isn't the typical stock that I would uh, call uh, bullish looking, but a lot of these... Um, ethanol plays have been getting some good rallies off of short squeezes, and I think that's probably the case for Anderson's as well. So it's just a short-term trade, nothing more. Not that I typically mention uh, investments in here, but I think the, the stock can make it up towards this 50-day moving average, which is about 38.87. So let's just call our price target 38.75 in this stock and here's how we want to play it looking at a 10 minute time frame let's look at a half hour chart first the uh, 30 minute time frame you can see in here that it looks like the buyers are, are, are gaining control back we had had this sell off with these lower highs and lower lows over in here now these lower high these higher lows I'm sorry and the higher highs so what I want to see and we saw nice volume here towards the end of the day I don't want to buy it right here because we had just seen the stock rally from 36 and a half up towards 37.25 here's what I would like to see instead I want to look for a pullback to $36.75 okay once it's pulled back to that level what I want to do is then see it take out whatever let's say it pulls back to 36.75 and then we'll buy above $37 a share. Okay, so we want to see it pull back and then resume its strength. Our stop will then go uh, right around these these moving averages right here. Let's call this stop at $36.45. Again, our upward target is about $38.75. So if we bought it at $37. And we had our risk down here about 65 cents, looking for about two dollars. Uh, I'm sorry, about a dollar 75 of upside for a risk of about 60 cents. So it makes a nice one to three risk reward ratio. Next up, we'll look at Ballard Power. Uh, BLDP is the symbol here. A couple of the fuel cell companies were getting some strength today. I saw, so le that led me to look at uh, a few of the other ones that haven't quite moved yet. And Ballard is one of those. Looking at this daily time frame, you can see that it's had some resistance in this area, and we could also see that it looks like a lot of stocks in that it's creating what looks to be a in inverted head and shoulders pattern, which is bullish. So if we look at an hourly time frame, you can see here that the buyers are regaining control in this stock as well. This recent high here is $6.30. So I think above $6.30, we want to buy this stock. I think then you put your stop below the five-day moving average right here at about $6.12. So our risk would be about $0.18, cents, and I'm looking for a target near $7 a share right up in here. So in other words, we're looking for about $0.70 cents of upside potential, and our risk would be about a uh, little less than $0.20. Cents. So would you risk $0.20 cents to make $0.70? Cents? I think it's a good risk-reward and worth keeping on your radar for tomorrow. Uh, next up, we're going to look at Omnivision, another stock that really, symbol OVTI, the, another stock that looks like maybe it's going to make a run for that 50-day moving average where there's also these highs as well. Let's call these highs, this high right in here, our target. Let's just drill in on that and see what that level is. And this high is $19.10. Uh, so I think between $19.10 and the 50-day moving average at 1960, 
that's the area where I, the, the, it looks like the stock has the potential to go. The way we want to trade this one is above this high right here. This high is 18.28. So above 18 dollars and 28 cents, and then we'll put our stop uh, at 18. Uh, I'm sorry, $17.86. So we're looking at a risk of about $0.40 cents a share and looking for a move up towards that uh, 1910 or 1920 to 1970 level. So again, looks like another uh, low risk, high potential uh, profit trade. And when I say high potential profit, what I mean by that is that these types of plays that have gotten beaten up badly like Omnivision and have a big short position have been the ones that are moving in here. And you could, again, make a case for an inverted head and shoulders in here, too. If that is the case, then this would be the shoulder. Here would be the head. And we're pretty much near the bottom of what would look like a right shoulder. So if you're more patient or maybe you want to buy options or something, you know, perhaps... The stock could then even make a run up towards $21 a share based on the uh, height of this pattern. That's going to be a little bit more longer term than what I'm interested in. I'm interested in this move up above $19 a share, and I think that looks uh, attainable from here. Let's take a look at two short sale candidates. First one, we've been looking at this one already here over the last month, uh, month and a half, and that's ISRG. Intuitive Surgical, and this stock on a weekly time frame, you can see why I like this one. This stock is broken down. It's below all the moving averages, and on the daily time frame, it looks like the sellers are back in control again. The 20-day moving average is kind of caught up to it on the downside. Now looking at a 10-minute time frame, the problem here is that the stock broke down so hard today. You know, It broke down below that 5-day moving average. That 5-day moving average is now declining. What I want to see in here is I want to see a, a continuation of this rally. I'd like to see a rally up towards about 19, I'm sorry, 95, a minimum of 95.20. So it's got to trade at least up to 95.20. So let's say this is our close here today, and this is 95.20. What I'd like to see it do is kind of rally up towards that level, and maybe it goes a little bit higher, but then as it's coming back down, not through that 20 cent level, but as it's just coming back down, we want to sell it short, with our stop above whatever this high is going to be, risking no more than about 50 cents on ISRG. So I don't know where the entry is going to be, but it'll be after one of these rallies as it starts breaking down is what we want to look for. And then our target will be about 93 and a half, uh, I'm sorry, not 90, 92 and a half uh, to $92 a share, 92 to 92 and a half down near this closing area right here. This is 92 and a half right here. So a couple dollars of downside and not a lot of risk. Next up, uh, we're going to look at the New York Stock Exchange Group, symbol NYSE. And I've been mentioning this one recently as well. We've got this prior support in here on this daily time frame, symbol NYX, Nancy Yellow X-Ray. And that becoming resistance right in here. Now on the weekly time frame, we can see or maybe we can't see, depending on whether this chart wants to pull up. Doesn't look like the chart wants to pull up, so maybe we'll come back to the weekly time frame. Let's go ahead and take a look instead. Here we've got you know the daily again, and we've got these lower highs. It broke down through that support. That support's now acting as resistance. It rallied up on light volume there. It's pulling back down. Now it's kind of going sideways in here. And this looks like something that could break down pretty substantially from here. And in order for the sellers to take control, it's below this low. That's that's the way I look at it. Below $57.30, we want to look for this stock to break down from here. I think the stock can then drop down towards about $55 a share. So about $2.30 of risk. And I think you could risk about $0.55, $0.60 cents in the stock. Certainly no higher than about fifty-eight oh five, depending on how aggressive you want to get with your stops. I don't want to get too specific with the stops. I'd rather leave that up to you guys because um, my track record with stops is some days will get uh, stopped out. The stock stock will go a penny higher and then cave in four dollars. So, leave, you know, leave those stops up to you. And and obviously you've got to determine what your proper share size is and whether it's the appropriate stock play or not. If the market does rally tomorrow, then obviously you're not going to want to focus much on the short side. So, uh, 
Keep an open mind to anything happening in the market. Keep an eye on those support and resistance levels. My name again is Brian Shannon, and I will be back tomorrow with uh, a recap after the close. And if I see anything interesting uh, that I think should be pointed out during the day, I might post that as well. Uh, have a good evening. Thank you.